Grab your wands and prepare to cast some spells. The Binger is ranking the best duels from the Harry Potter movies. As every Harry Potter fan knows, dueling plays a major role in the series. It's how a witch or a wizard approves themselves in combat. And throughout the movies, we're treated to several intense duels where we see just what the characters are capable of. The battles on our list were often epic and intimate at the same time, full of awesome displays of power and true meaning for the characters. Let's get started. But keep in mind, there are spoilers ahead from throughout the Harry Potter series. At the bottom of our list is the duel between Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy in the Half-Blood Prince. Harry and Draco are often at odds throughout the series, and this battle came after years of frustration. While Harry is right to be suspicious of Draco and what he's up to at Hogwarts, his actions here are careless at best. Not only does he walk in on Draco in the midst of an emotional breakdown, he deploys the Sanctum Sempra Curse without knowing what it does. Granted, it is Draco who starts the duel. It is possible Harry would have simply questioned Draco if he hadn't cast the first spell. Yet, after several rounds, Harry deploys the curse created by the Half-Blood Prince, Severus Snape himself. He had no information other than that the spell was, quote, for enemies. Sure, Draco was an enemy of sorts, and the powerful incantation stopped the duel and Draco. However, Draco really didn't deserve to be so severely injured. It was lucky that Snape came along when he did and stepped in to heal Draco. Speaking of Snape, he featured heavily in one of the earliest duels in the series. Now true, this duel between Snape and Gilderoy Lockhart from Chamber of Secrets wasn't an example of real combat, but it was a demonstration for the benefit of Hogwarts students. Dueling is an important tradition in wizarding culture with its own rules and formalities. True, usually when we see duels in Harry Potter, it's in the midst of monumentous battles with dire consequences and important implications. But you have to start somewhere, and for the young witches and wizards of Harry Potter, it was here. Lockhart, the Defense Against the Dark Arts instructor, wanted to demonstrate dueling to his students and recruited Snape to do so. But Lockhart wasn't just any instructor, he was also an extremely famous wizard. So he exhibited all the pompous arrogance that he was known for in his demonstration with Snape. That is, right up until the two squared off and Snape defeated Lockhart immediately with an Expelliarmus incantation. While Lockhart tried to play it off, we appreciated seeing Snape put Lockhart in his place. This brief glimpse at the Potion Master's skills in combat gave us a hint of just how talented a wizard Snape truly was. This next entry is less of a duel and more of a chase, but it does feature a few magical volleys within the intense action. Neville Longbottom started the series as a weak and timid character. By the time the Deathly Hallows Part 2 rolled around though, Neville had come into his own. And during the final encounter with Voldemort and his followers, Neville showed just how heroic he'd become. This battle between him and hundreds of Voldemort's lower level followers, the Snatchers, was one of those times. When the Battle of Hogwarts begins, Neville alone stands against a horde of Snatchers. As the shield to keep them out fails, they chase Neville over the bridge leading to the castle. Along the way, he dodges their spells while bringing down the bridge behind him section by section. In fact, he almost goes down himself. Ultimately though, Neville manages to take out countless bad guys and emerges victorious in an act of pure bravery. The Battle of the Seven Potters happens at the beginning of the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Unlike the three previous battles we've mentioned, this one involves a lot more people. And on top of that, the combat goes airborne. When the Order of the Phoenix comes to escort Harry from his muggle relative's home to the burrow, they take extra precautions. To keep him safe, seven of the group take Polyjuice Potions so that they can take on the guise of Harry and throw off Voldemort's followers. They think they'll just encounter one or two of them, but it turns out to be an ambush. Dozens of bad guys take to the sky and go up against our heroes and try to take down the real Harry. The battle is a fast-paced whirlwind that leads to a climax where Harry duels with Voldemort as they both soar through the air. It's a fierce fight that goes from the skies to the highway and back again. It is also intensely tragic. Harry's owl Hedwig pays the ultimate price for trying to come to his rescue. Just like Harry, we were heartbroken watching the beautiful bird fall from the sky. 
And if that wasn't enough, their fearless leader, Mad-Eye Moody, perishes in the battle too. It's a huge loss for the good guys. We don't get to see Minerva McGonagall strut her stuff all that often during the Harry Potter movies. That's part of what makes this duel from the Deathly Hallows Part 2 so exciting. After Dumbledore's demise, Snape is appointed headmaster of Hogwarts. With the rise of Voldemort, Harry and his allies have made themselves scarce. Yet, they re-emerge at the school to challenge Snape directly. Harry stands up and confronts Snape in front of the school. When Snape draws his wand on Harry though, McGonagall comes to his defense. She steps in front of Harry and draws her wand. After a standoff, McGonagall casts the first spell. What follows is a powerful exchange of magical blows on both sides. The whole time McGonagall is stepping forward and Snape is moving away. Yet this isn't simply a duel between good and evil. Snape has been a double agent for the Order of the Phoenix for years, so he's on McGonagall's side even though she doesn't know it. That's why when she steps forward to aid Harry, Snape almost drops his wand. And when she attacks, he cleverly deflects her magic onto Voldemort's loyalists with him before he flees. These are subtle moments, but say a lot about Snape's loyalties, as well as McGonagall's. This duel in the Goblet of Fire between Harry and Voldemort is perhaps one of the scariest scenes in the whole series. It's the first true encounter between Harry and Voldemort, and it happens in a graveyard. Just as Cedric and Harry win the Triwizard Tournament, they activate a portkey and are whisked away. They're immediately confronted by Voldemort and a gaggle of his followers. The followers take out Cedric and trap Harry in order to do a spell to restore Voldemort to full strength. It's a succession of frightening and heart-rending moments with the worst yet to come. The revitalized Voldemort takes on Harry in a duel. Harry's young and inexperienced. As a result, he seems completely outmatched. Fortunately, the cores of his and Voldemort's wands connect and create a priori incantatum. This enables Harry's parents, past victims of Voldemort, to come to his aid and help him escape. It's a heart-pounding, fast-paced frenzy of drama. This is one of the biggest and most well-known battles in the Harry Potter series. It happens when Harry and his friends sneak into the Department of Mysteries during the Order of the Phoenix. Their goal was to help Sirius Black, but they end up walking right into a trap. The kids are quickly surrounded by Voldemort's followers, and even though they do their magical best against the adults, even holding the bad guys off for a while, ultimately, they're captured. That is, until Sirius Black and the other members of the Order of the Phoenix come to their aid and the fight begins anew. It's thrilling to watch this group trade magical volley after magical volley. And I gotta tell you, there is no higher point than seeing Harry and his godfather tag team in a duel. The fun is quickly interrupted though, when Bellatrix Lestrange launches the Avada Kedavra curse at Sirius. His demise is a terrible moment that showed the ruthlessness of Bellatrix, and it left Harry once again without any real family. The moment has left an indelible mark on Harry Potter fans everywhere. A lot happens during the Battle of Hogwarts during the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Yet, the fight between Molly Weasley and Bellatrix Lestrange is a highlight. Throughout the series, Bellatrix has shown herself to be an adept duelist. Her talent has earned her a place at Voldemort's right hand. Yet, we've barely seen a hint of what Molly Weasley can do with a wand. When Bellatrix comes after her daughter though, suddenly Molly becomes a force of nature as she steps up to defend Ginny. Bellatrix doesn't take Molly seriously at first, until they start exchanging blows and Molly gives as good as she gets. In the end, Molly freezes a stunned Bellatrix and shatters her into pieces. It's an incredible display of what a mother will do to protect her child, and it's one of the most rousing moments in the series. Amidst the chaos and carnage of the Battle of Hogwarts, this was a moment to cheer. This next fight was the duel that the series had always been leading up to. It's Harry Potter and Voldemort's final showdown in Deathly Hallows Part 2. In the movie, Harry and Voldemort battle throughout the grounds of Hogwarts, finally landing in the courtyard to have their final duel. This scene shows just how Harry has grown since his first battle with Voldemort. In this encounter, the two are almost equals with Harry standing up to the evil wizard despite his reign of terror. If that weren't enough, it's intercut with Hermione and Ron's battle against Nagini, the final Horcrux. And just when all hope seems lost, Neville takes Nagini out with the Sword of Gryffindor. 
it weakens Voldemort just enough to give Harry an opening to defeat the Dark Lord. It's the most important duel in the series. Not to mention watching Voldemort disintegrate is pretty satisfying. Still, there's one duel in the series that rises above the rest. It's the standoff between Dumbledore and Voldemort in the Order of the Phoenix. Shortly after Bellatrix takes out Sirius, Dumbledore arrives to protect Harry from Voldemort. It's a match between two magical titans, and it doesn't disappoint. In fact, it shows just how talented and inventive the two wizards are. When Voldemort attacks with fire, Dumbledore counters with water. And when Voldemort sends shards of glass sailing at Dumbledore, he creates a shield that turns them into sand. The pair's power is on full display, and it's an incredible thing to watch. While there are numerous duels in Harry Potter, this one is the most epic. Do you agree with our ranking? Which duel in Harry Potter do you think is the most epic? Did we leave any out? Keep the magic going in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Binger for more spell-binding content. Thanks for watching.